We are God's creations, each of us crafted for a purpose. We begin our journey as dreamers in a world filled with possibility. Nothing seems impossible. Along the way, we begin to settle and dreams are replaced with details. Routine takes over. We find ourselves listening to the thoughts of limitations, our purpose and desire lost in the blaring static of our lives. And still, in our deepest places, we feel a push towards something more, a sense that we were made for something greater. We yearn most for a life of significance instead of survival. Let's discover what was lost, restore what was diminished, and live out our purpose. It's time to dream again. Well, good morning, Destination Church. Again, so good to be with you. Uh, Pastor Johnny and I both will be up here today. We're excited about this. We thought, prayed, asked the Lord. We felt like this was how we were supposed to close this series out. And so we're very excited about it. It is our last Sunday in Dream Again. And so today it's just a little bit different. We've looked at a lot of different things. We started out talking about um, building your dream on a firm foundation and then we talked about dreams being risky business um, last week we had Derek and Lovett up here and we said that God dreams require God's involvement today Pastor Johnny the one thing that you and I both know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that God dreams God honoring dreams will change lives so that's welcome right. everybody that's right and, and that's how we began how Destination Church began, Pastor. We were talking about that. You went to the website. It's right there. It began with a dream. It began with a dream. That's how, all, that's how a lot of things God likes to use. He, did, he, he gives us a dream. He gives you a dream. He gives us a dream. Can you, can you read that statement that yeah, you found up there? Yeah. This is so, so if, powerful. If you were to go to our website and, and you'll look there, uh, drop uh, the About tab, drop it down, you'll see there. In October of 2009, Pastor John, we've been together, what? Come on now, 11, 11 years, years almost, right? In <laughs> August. And so um, God put a dream in the heart of Johnny Mitchum to talk to Rodney Truth about the possibility of merging churches. And we did it. And it wasn't easy. It was risky. And it, it required God first. Amen. That's right. And uh, so we're going to, we, we just felt like through the series that we, we just wanted to give you a couple of really neat things, but about how to, you know, how to walk this thing out. So we're, our desire today is that you would walk out of here and you'd be able to start walking your dream out no matter where you are in it. But before we do, we got some really neat things. First of all, for um, we, we're walking this out week in and week out, and this past week was a wild and crazy week. So It was, and it's, it's, it's amazing sometimes when you're able to see um, your dreams come to fruition and see the impact that it's having. And we had, we had just um, an amazing time together. One of the things that we were able to do, one of our, um, one of our men, members at our church, Danny Tootin, lost his mother's 97, well, she was going to be 97 years old. And uh, we were able to come together, and there's a picture of us. We were at the Primitive Baptist Church, Ben James Primitive Baptist Church. And it was just an amazing, sweet time to be able to minister together and, uh, um, and to watch this lady. How long has she been a member of that church? 67 60, years she had been a member of her church. 67 years she sat in the same spot. That's legacy. And that was her dream, and she, I mean, what, a, what an amazing thing to happen. We also, though, the Summit Training Center Summit came. Summit Training Center, we are part of a school that's up in the Dalton area, and uh, we have students that are in here today that were, have been through there, but uh, uh, we, were, we hosted them this week from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, we, did, we were able to do, they were able to do lots of things. They, they served our community, or served our region. Uh, the, we closed out kind of in a fun way on Thursday morning with our staff down at Sheffield's Coffee. Had an awesome worship service. Come on. It was so much fun. But, uh, and so, again, just continuing to move forward with the dream. But y'all had Friday. We had a lot of worship this week. We did. We Friday did. night worship at the Tyndalls. It we was had amazing. Youth, with our youth. But then um, yesterday, another regional thing. Um, we have a team getting ready to go into um, the Dominican Republic. And as a precursor, they went over to Clinch County and worked with Jesus and Jam. So check them yep, out, right? Yep, Jesus and Jam. And, uh, and again, like, just what people it, all over. Living the dream. Yeah, living yeah. The dream. And, and what is that? That's, that's a ministry in Homerville. And they're able to, to, the lady has a dream 
Um, this was five years in the make, five years dream, and this is to, to be able to feed the people in their community. So what they do is they, I wasn't able to go because I was at the funeral. They packed, look at all these lunches. They packed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and a drink and a, and a cracker or something, and they went and delivered out into the community. They had, these, they had the bands, and there's music playing, and the kids in the community comes out. It was powerful. It's about reaching the community and beyond. And so, I mean, that's part of the dream that we had. When we came together, here's what we said. We feel like God, God said if we came together, we could reach more people. And it's been amazing what God has done. And we believe that God wants to reach people through you. Because here's what I know about you. You're saying, what about my dream? And you probably wrote a dream. You're like, my dream's gone. <laughs> I had a young lady came in this morning early for prayer with us. Uh, she's a senior. And she says, Johnny, where's our dreams at? Because <laughs> you know we wrote them all there, right? Well, we have some of those dreams. And we wanted to share them with you. And uh, the, we had the children's ministry do this. We had our students do this and adults do this. So we just wanted to share with you some of the, some of the dreams that are right here within our community. And uh, so here, here's a couple of, the, of, of some of the kids' dreams. Um, here, here's one. Teach people to love God's creation with horses. That's a young girl's dream. All right. Another one. This is, again, these are children. To be a mom that has five kids and a famous basketball player and a tattoo artist. Come yeah. on. <laughs> So that is my dream. That's what she said. All yeah. right. A uh, couple here. To be a firefighter. To be a farmer. Um, I like this one. To be Elsa. Yeah. Yes. These are kids, right? These are dreams. These are dreams. Check this out. I love this. My dream is to be a professional NFL player because I think it will be fun and I can make a lot of money. <laughs> Here's another one. To be a doctor to save people's lives or to be a veterinarian to help save animals' lives. So wow, there you go. Wow. There it is. There it let's, is. let's 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 go from students. It, it it starts getting a, a little bit um, a little bit crazy. Some of the students, I just want to be a servant for Jesus, um, and be a mama and pour into my children. And this just says I want to be a cosmetologist and travel the world and sing for people. Amen. Music is powerful. That's great. Another one here. My dream is to get a medical degree, travel to different countries, and provide aid to those who need it. Awesome. Here's another one. Um, we just saw a little bit about this on the, on the video, but having the ability to fight for my country, I want to serve in the United States Army. Wow. These are ki these are students, by yeah. the way. Okay, these are students. Um, another one. And this this is what we were talking about. Not just we're going to talk about that today, but to overcome my dream. This is a dream. My dream is to overcome my anxiety and to open up to ones that care to help me. Another dream is to actually let people care about me for once in my life. It's a dream. And another dream is, and again, we've said this all along, it's not just about some grandiose idea for a business or other things, but it's stuff that's going on right now, today, in their lives. Here's another student to fit in. That was the dream, Pastor Johnny, just to fit in. Wow. So, some adults uh, had one person say, I, want, I dream to open a travel agency. That's a dream, open a travel agency. Another one just really hits home that my son finds peace in his heart and life. Uh, and a life for us to be, and believe for us to be close again, like we once were again. Th these are dreams, mm. man. People want their families back together. Reconciliation, right? Yeah, another one here. To be a, my dream, to be a father. <laughs> my dream, to have salvation for my children and my family members. What a great dream. It's a dream that these people are having. Um, what else? Financial stability. We've seen a lot of that through this, and mm -hmm. uh, and so that that was their dream is financial stability. They feel like they're caught up in a in a cycle that they can't stop, and they're they want financial stability. Hey, hey, we want to help them. That's we right. had two men on the stage last week that would love to help you if you're looking for financial stability. Both of those men help us. They work with lots of people and getting them on budgets and all kinds of things. And so, yeah, that's why we gave you their phone numbers and all the stuff we did last week. And so, dreams, Pastor. That's John, right. Dreams. One more because this was this was. This was great because some of you may be there. It says, um, my dream is that in the fourth quarter of my life that I can continue to work and help my community and family with the God-given talents. And then one more, and this is so powerful. My dream is to dream again. My final to be able one, to dream again. Yes, my final one today is to be a godly man, a godly husband, a godly dad, a godly teacher, a godly baseball, a basketball coach for the remainder of my life. Come on, that's dreaming, baby. That's dreaming. That's what we're here for today, Pastor Johnny, looking at dreaming. And so if you've taken notes, and I hope you are, uh, we've given you plenty of fill-in-the-blanks today, uh, just uh, our open spaces so you can fill them in. But uh, 
we would just want you to know that uh, uh, first and foremost, our soul tattoo this morning, um, if you're new to Destination Church, what is that? Uh, your, your souls, your mind, your will, your emotions. If you could walk out of here with one thing today that's there, right there, fresh for you, simple, is this. It's, a God, it's that a God-honoring dream changes lives. And the beauty of us being together up here is that we've watched it happen now together for 11, going on 11 years, uh, watching God change people's lives day in and day out. But I don't believe it would have happened, Pastor Johnny, without the passage that we've been using throughout almost the whole series. Proverbs 29, 18, I love it in the message paraphrase. It says it like this, if people can't see what God is doing, and that would be me or you with mm -hmm. not knowing where we're going with our dream, right? Uh, they stumble all over themselves. And that's why we're doing what we're doing today. That's right. But when they attend to what God reveals, they are most blessed. But the other side of that is, and we know this well, we have been fighting an enemy mm. for, for 11 years as well. And, and you know, Satan, he, he doesn't like God honoring dreams. And so his purpose is, Jesus said it well, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy your dream. But Jesus said, everybody say, but Jesus, come on. But, but Jesus. Jesus, right? But Jesus said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And when we walk through and work through God honoring dreams, that's what we get is a rich and satisfying life. It doesn't mean it's easy. doesn't no. mean that we have to work hard. doesn't mean we have to have a plan, all these things. But we know in the end what's going to happen. That's right, and some of us, some of you here right now, and I, I, we know this, is that this, the enemies try to steal that dream. You're like, what dream? That dream, that dream, maybe it was to, a tribal agency. Let's use that. God's tried to steal that dream. But maybe God, I mean, not God's, the enemies tried to steal that dream. Maybe it was the other thing. Man, my, I'm hoping that my, my, we can reconcile this relationship with my son. And the enemy says, you'll never reconcile that's that. That's right. Every that's time. a lie. He's a liar. That's a lie, right? And that's the dream you have, and it's real, and it's powerful. And God wants that God-honoring dream. That's a dream you have for your family, for yourself, that God's given you. It can change lives. And I want to just remind you, keep pressing on. So what we realize is this, when we're, when we're, when we're going through dreams, is that there's two types of there's two people here. There's some of us that have that dream, like that travel agency, that, that I want to I wanna start this business. I want to do this thing. It's an idea, right? That maybe you've had for years, or maybe it was just recently. God said, boom, I got an idea. I got something I want you to start thinking about, start praying about. And it hit you, and you know it's something maybe that you have to do, that you want to do. And, and, and it's something that if you feel like you don't do it, you like something's going to happen. And when we talk about that, you know, you hear people, Derek, and them talking about that when they talked about it last week. Or someone starts talking about that new idea, you're like, it get, that's what I'm talking about. That's you. That's for some of us here, that's that dream. It's an idea. It's something that God's given you, an opportunity, a mission trip, something that will change lives. Maybe some of you are like, I want to bring the next Tim Tebow. Well, let me tell you this. You don't want to be Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow is Tim Tebow. That's you want right. to be you. Come on. You want to be the way that God created you. And it's going to change the world. But that's what God but has placed you. But we love Tim Tebow. Exactly. That's okay. not a hit against you, okay? Um, but God has placed you to do, it's an idea, it's this thought. But there's other things that God has not just placed. It's not just a, an idea, and we'll talk about that. It's, it's a desire. So we talk about a desire today because some of us, I, I know for me the idea, anybody can start talking about some of the things that I'm very, very passionate about. Like Pastor Johnny said, um, you know, I get very, very excited but then there's this whole desire thing. In other, in other words, I'm wishing for this. We've realized through this series, talking with people, working with people, that they're still longing for this thing. and they wanna, They're ready to kind of obtain it, in other words. Let, let's get rolling. Let's move forward with this. And um, right now, and uh, we're, we're working through this, I, I feel like, citywide with, global, with the Global Leadership Summit. And we're gathering leaders from all sectors of life. And, you know, Pastor Johnny heads this thing up for us here in the, in the region. But, you know, and, and we thought it was going to be boom, bang, bing. But reality is this, because we've had guys in that, and working with us that are working with cities across the nation. And it takes time, That's right. right? And so right now, we're sitting back listening to the city. What's the city saying? In other words, what's the city crying out for right now? We did, we're doing lots of polls. We're doing lots of different things. We have people sitting around, actually going in on the street, asking questions, a lot of stuff, because we need to know. And you know what we're doing, Pastor Johnny? We're waiting. 
we're listening. We heard last week from a man who's watched cities transform. He said typically about six years, right? Come yeah, on now. And, uh, and you heard Derek say six months last week, but I just want you to know some things take time. Look That's at your right. neighbor and say time. Come on, tell them. Time, time. right? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the, the young, old prophet Habakkuk would tell us in, in <laughs> chapter 2, he would say it like this, write the vision. And so I want to tell you today, if you're, you know, there's a God dream inside of you. And right. write it down, man. Write it down. That's that thing that gets you so fired up, so excited. And so write it down. As a matter of fact, he would say make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. And so what we found out is if we don't write it down, we forget, right? Mm. I don't know if you're like me. And so I have to write it down. And so we, that's what we've done, and that's why we've been able to run. And we know if we get a little bit off track to the left or to the right, we come back to the center because we know what the center is for us. And here at Destination Church, and so you have to make it plain so we can run with it. But then, <laughs> this is important, yeah. he tells us, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. And sometimes this is where we get the most anxious and worried and concerned and all these things going on. But he says it hastens to the end. It will not lie. It seems slow. Wait for it. He tells us to wait again. It will surely come. It will not delay. And so, you know, we, we know that many of you, you want to see, you know, this desire. You want to see reconciliation with your family, maybe. That's right. You, you, we, there's a hope. You know, you, you feel like you know there's a hope and a future for your family, but you're not seeing everything work out just like it's working right now. Hey, can I tell you today? Hold on. That's right. Hang on. We've been hanging on for a long time in many areas. Our food ministry in D.C. downtown, we waited six years on that one. Six years in the midst of the vision with all kind of things working around it. And so, you know, because it's a part of it. What we're seeing today with being on stage with, with our, you know, with our Hispanic congregation, yes. being with all these things, there's just so much in this. And some of you are financial freedom is your deal. Again, please listen to us. We're going to give you some simple action steps to be able to work it out. And so right there, Pastor Johnny, talk to us a little bit. We're going to what I call one of Jesus' power parables. Yes. And so this is a tough one for some of us, but a power parable. Pastor Johnny's going to walk us through it. You'll see it on the screen. So uh, let, let's just set the tension just for a moment. So here's where we are, and we just said it. So here's where most of us are in this room. If not, maybe you're on the inside of it, but we got people that have a dream, it's an idea, and have a desire. And you just want to know what's next. <laughs> What do we do with that? I have this thought. I have this idea. I have this desire. I want to see my family. I want to see this, this idea. What do you do with that? And Jesus, he, he's pretty tough when we talk about this. This is, this, is, this is not easy to hear because he's really pressing in with what um, he wanted to share. And this is a parable. The parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So it's right. very spiritual depth here, but it's for each one of us. And let me just kind of paraphrase the story for the sake of time. Jesus says the, the kingdom of heaven, and then he begins to tell this story. is like a, a, a man who owned a lot of property, and he was gone away for a while, and he brings three servants, and he gives each servant a certain amount of money. He says, here you go, servant one, here you go, servant two, and here you go, servant three. It was a certain amount, different, but a certain amount. He gave it to each one of them. He said, okay, guys, I'm heading away. I will be back. And so servant one and servant two decided to take what the gift, the thing that his master had given to him and invest in it and do something with this talent, this, this amount of money. Because they knew the master wanted to see something when he got back. They didn't want to know that he just had held on to it. So these two guys went out, they took a risk, because who knows, it could have went down, but they went out and they, in, they invested in it, they got it back, and it, it doubled in money. And then one guy, the third guy, what did he do with his? If you read the story, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> he was scared. He's like, oh, man, I, I'm just going to bury it. I'm just going to hide it. I'm not, in other words, I'm not going to do anything with what the master has given me. Mm. The master comes back, and he comes back. He says, okay, servant one, what do you got? He says, master, I doubled it. All right, come on. Let's celebrate. Let's party. This is good stuff. Two, um, servant two, what would you do with it? Same thing, I doubled it. Awesome. Servant three, come on, give me some good news. Um, I did I, 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 I hate it, Master. But here it is. Here's your money. And, uh, and, and the Master's like, this is where it gets real heavy. He says, wicked, you wicked, lazy servant. If you knew I wanted you to do, basically, you did nothing with what I gave you. You did nothing with the gift that I gave you. When it comes to the dreams, 
what are you doing with God has given you? That dream, we want to help you with that, but what are you doing with that dream that God has placed in your heart? What are you doing with that? Because that's where it gets a little bit tough, that's where it gets a little bit hard sometimes, because here's what I don't want to be. We, I don't want to be, see, if I, if I would have went back, goodness, 11 years ago, and that thought that God said, Johnny, Pastor Rodney, you guys kind of think alike, what, what if you should go over there, what if I didn't do that? And I just held on to that. No, no, no. I want to do it my way. And he's like, I give you this dream, Johnny. And what if? And here's the thing is this. What are you doing with what God has given you? And maybe for some of you, here's what I realized. Maybe for some of you, like, for some of you like I don't even know what my dream is. That's right. I, don't even know what, I don't even know what that looks like. That's why we want to help you. That's why we're here. That's, That's why, why we want to help you today figure out, help you take some steps, give you some tools, some resources, some things to help you make that step. I, th I think one you of the things that I see here that's really clear to me is in, in verse 25, he says, the guy that did nothing with, in our instance today with the dream, he says, I was afraid. I think there's a lot of fear, fear that's right. that we're up against a lot of fear. We're, we're seeing that. People are scared to take the risk. I would encourage you to go back two weeks, and we talked about dreams are risky business two weeks ago. Um, but there are times where we just have to step out in faith. And, you know, one of the things that we're seeing over and over again, we've seen two businesses launch in the last two months. Like, people are launching new businesses in the last two months, and that's on the business realm. I don't know what it's like in your family. I don't know what it's like with your relationships. Those of you that are wanting reconciliation, this is my thing. If you're a Christian in here today, God, he's looking for you to take the first step. Just step out. Step out. Let him meet you there. It, it'll be baby steps. It could be leaps. It could be <laughs> bounds. I don't know. You know, listening to Derek's story last week, you know, I mean, six months, boom, bang, bing, right? And so, and I don't know where it is, but we can't be fearful when we have a God that says he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's right. And so we have to be able to move forward in the midst of that. And so just a couple of things that, you know, we, you know God wants you to do more than just hold on to the dreams because... God honoring dreams change lives. There's something within you right. that could change people's lives. Mm. We can tell you story after story after story after story if we had time for that today. And, and so, you know, but again, if, they haven't, if you haven't discovered it, that's what we're here for. That's what we're doing now. And so there's just a couple of things that God wants us to do. We use this in our growth track, yep. but we're using it in the dream series too right here. That's right. There's, there's three things is first of all to discover what that is discover that dream some of we hey we know some of yours are ready that's right <laughs> i don't mean that we bad. Help you we're praying it. for you we we're believing yes. for you but to discover what that is what is that dream what is that purpose what is that thing but not just to discover it not just hey yeah, i have this dream to begin to develop what does that look like to develop that skill that thing that god has placed inside of you and then after you do that to begin to use it to use that gift, that, that dream that God has for His glory. Not for you. This is not self-gratifying. Right. This is for the glory of God. And watch what God begins to do when you're able to do that. And that's really where Pastor Rodney, our growth track is. Um, if you start our growth track, that's where you're going to discover your purpose. First Next foremost. week is a great time. For week those of you who say, I want to know my dream, but I don't want to go to the growth track. Then you don't want to know your dream. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I mean, I mean, seriously, because we want to help you, but if you're like, I, don't want, I just want God just to go bloop. Well, you know what? <laughs> God may go bloop, but God wants to use people to help you understand and, and, and open that up. Yeah, we were telling for service that so we've been together 11 years now, working through this whole thing, watching this ministry do what it does. Our heart was never to have a church that, you know, would do whatever. It was really to, to just be a church. We wanted to reach the region. We had a, That's right. We, you know, because we believe if your dream doesn't scare you, it might not be from God, right? Mm -hmm. And so... We, so that's, yeah, anyway. And so we, um, we just, we've dreamed for this whole region, right? We're dreaming for nine counties here. There's a county in Florida that, that where county touches, Baker County, Florida. We, we pray for that county. And so just like being in Clinch County yesterday, that didn't just happen. I was traveling through there, and the Lord put it on my heart to go talk to the lady that runs Jesus and Jam over there. It was, it was a part mm -hmm. of the dream, Pastor Johnny, because right. we knew we could get food over there because food is one of the things the Lord's blessed us with. And, and so it's, it's a piece of the dream. And so it, it just, I'm telling you today, it, you've got to be willing to just step out 
and step in. And we said it. I want to say it now on this one thing that we uh, said at the end last time. Mm. But we used to say this all the time. I think we're going to start saying it again. But if you'll give us a year with your life, a year, you say, man, that's a long time. It is. But I tell runners all the time, people that think they want to run, I'll tell them all the time, this is what it's going to look like because I know the process. Mm -hmm. And so what we say here is if you'll give us a year and start stepping, you know, and, and just working through because things happen and you don't get to make it to every week of growth track and you might have to hit the next month and we got a lot of grace on all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if you'll give us a year, get in a group and let, start building community here. First and foremost, get to know God, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior and then build community with other people and then discover your purpose in our growth track so you can make a difference on our dream team. It takes about a year. Reality is what yeah. I know and you know is mm -hmm. it takes about six to seven years to build a good relationship with somebody. That's right. That's right. And so that, that, there's, a, there's tool number one. <laughs> Growth track on your connection card. Just let us know. We'll get with you next week. You can start. I, I, I help lead that and oversee that. We have some amazing leaders in there. I purposely love to see and, and understand your gifts, your spiritual gifts. If, if I were to ask you, what are your spiritual gifts? You're like, I don't know. Then we want to help you understand that because that's part of the dream that God's given you. Um, the other thing is just... I would encourage you, how, how often, if you really want to know the dream God's given you, or unpack that more and know how to fulfill that, are you spending time listening and talking to God? That, that's, I know that may sound basic to some of you, but some of us, the only time we listen and talk to God is on Sunday morning. And I'm not being mean, I'm just saying, if you really want to hear the heart of God and move forward, it has to be more than just a Sunday morning thing. It's a daily, I want to hear the heart of God and know so I can be fulfilling the dreams given us. But there's also something we're doing this, this, sun, this Wednesday. Starting Wednesday. Jen talked about it. Highly encouraging. This is called Love Does. Love has got to be what drives that dream. Come on now. Amen. I mean, it has to be. And that's happening. If this is a God-honoring dream. That's right. That's right. And it has to start here. I mean, and, and we're having it here. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be able to meet together. But I also have a group that we're going to start in. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's called um, My Dream, but it's Put Your Dream to the Test. And it's a group that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to get the time down. But it's, it's understanding the difference between a dreamer and someone who achieves a dream. Just dreaming, because I know for some of you, like, I've got this dream. Let's clarify that together. Let's look together at some yeah. questions that we can ask together and dialogue together to really understand what this dream is. I want to help you get there. I love helping people figure out what that dream is and help them get there. You, 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 to learn more, to get instruction, and to listen to other people. Um, that's huge. And the other part about it is just being a part of our dream team. I mean, we have people... <laughs> Um, the reason that we, we talk about this so much is that there's people on the dream team that are serving, that are living their dream, that God has, how he's wired them, how he's created them to do what they do. From D.C. downtown to hospitality to people on stage to people running sound and production, children, students, they're living out their, their purposes and dreams because that's how God wired them. Well, what we found out is we're better together. Mm -hmm. We say it all the time. We are better together. And so when you're on the dream team, you're, you're living it out with a team of people. They're going to encourage you along the way. That's the heart of what we're doing. And so working this thing out, helping you, pushing you along, pushing you forward. When you want to do whatever it is, sleep in or whatever it is that you want to do. And they're pressing in a little bit on you. And so, yes, yes, <laughs> got to get on the dream, the dream team. It's a piece of the puzzle. Um, God honoring dreams change lives. It's about and serving, right? I mean, it think is, of, every think time. Of, what, if you were to ask Pastor Ron and I on any given day, you said, I just don't feel close to God. I feel like I'm not living the dream that God has for me. We would ask you two questions. We'd say, are you in a small group? Because you're going to build community there. And if you'd say no, we'd say, we, we want to get you in a group because that's where you're yes, going to find community. Yes. Second thing we ask, are you serving somewhere? You're like, but I don't even know my dream. We would say, just start serving. I love Pastor Ron. He says, put your hand to the plow. I love it because it's, if you're not putting your hand in the plow, you're kind of kind of just kicking back. And uh, but if you're putting your hand in the plow and you're serving, you're going to find fulfillment in doing that. So we've given you some action steps. I mean, so I mean, let's just remember you're here right now. That's the first action step. That's right. Part we're of this service. service. I love it. Um, groups. So Opportunity groups, Wednesday. That's right. We have growth track coming up Sunday. Sunday. Dream group. You can sign up for that. I'll let you know when we're doing it. Um, so we've got a lot of. You know, opportunities for you. So a couple of things that we realized is, is you know, I, I like to hear stories of people that dreamed about something and then they were able to hit the dream. They were able to hit their mark. Um, mm, I, that's right. I'm not a big basketball guy or anything. As a matter of fact, it's never been on my radar really because of my great size. And uh, so, 
And, but I know basketball season is over and everybody knows the name Michael Jordan. And just a little bit about that because dreams take push through. You, you have to push in. You have to push on. Even on days when you didn't want to. And, you know, Michael was cut from his high school basketball team. What if he would have quit, right? I love it when they ask him questions. He said, I've failed over and over again in my life. That is why I succeed. So some of you have dreamed a little bit and you feel like maybe you failed over and over again. Hey, keep pressing in. Michael says he missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. I love this. I've almost, uh, he said, I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and miss. Come on, somebody look at your neighbor and say, he missed. He, he <laughs> missed, right? He said, I failed over and over again in my life. That is why I succeed because he keeps pushing mm. forward. Right. And then I told first service this past week, and we pushed these little devotionals really hard because it's a one step. This is a dream given book. I believe it. There's really lots of neat stuff in here. As a matter of fact, brand new ones up June, July, and August. You can pick one of these up, or you can get it, you know, on your um, any of your devices. And of course, we it's digital as well. But there was a story this past week talking about dreaming. Mm. Talking about hitting the mark with the dream with a family. Um, you know, it was called Invest in Your Children. It was on Wednesday of this past week. And Job 8, 7 says it like this. Though your beginnings was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. And that's the power of dream. And reality is, it says that the Lazy Bee Ranch sits on 260 square miles. Most of it, scrub of it is scrub brush, and it's been... In the Day family since 1881. We heard a lot about some history of, of Danny's mom yesterday and some of the cool stories there, so it's good history. When Harry and Ada Mae Day had their first child, a baby daughter, they traveled 200 miles to a hospital, 200 miles, take that one in for a moment, right? And for the delivery and, and brought her home to a difficult life. The four-room abode house had no running water, no electricity, there was no school within driving distance. You would think with such limited resources, the little girl's future might be limited, right? We don't want to limit what God can do in our lives. So her parents took action. Some of you, if you're a parent here today, a piece of the dream is your kids. It's time to take action, right? Harry and Ada May were determined their children would have the best education possible. They subscribed to metropolitan newspapers and magazines, read to their kids hour after hour. When her, their daughter was four years old, Ada May began her... Uh, on her, uh, her, her, they began her on the Calvert method of homeschooling, and later she, that she went on to the best boarding schools possible. One summer day, they took their children on a car trip to visit all the state capitals in America, west of the Mississippi River. When young Sandra was ready to for college, she went to Stanford University, then on to law school, and eventually she became the first woman justice to sit on the Supreme Court of the United States of America. So the word for you today is invest in your kids. But we would say also invest in your dream. Right. I don't know what it looks like for you today, right? And be willing to start small. Otherwise, you won't start at all. That's if right. we don't invest in our dream, we, we, we're, we're not going to get started at all. And I don't know what that looks like for you today. But, you know, invest small. That's what we've done. We, over and over and over again with every piece of the puzzle. That's, right. that's how we've done it. And, and, and so, you know, and, and use what God's given you and He will bless it. We've been there over and over and over again in this 11 years that we've been together. Can't wait to see what God's going to do starting this afternoon, right? Because I don't have a clue. That's but right. this is one thing that I do know for you today and for me. Without Jesus at the center of what's going on without Jesus at the very center it can't be what I would call a God honoring dream that's right and so I want to take a moment before we close and just heads bowed eyes closed all over the room because maybe you're in here and you've got that dream and you know just what it looks like but we want God to touch it today that's right. we want the Holy Spirit to infuse it today with his power but if you don't have Jesus at the center of your life it's really hard to work out from under that and so just right there where you are, if that's you, just, just say, Jesus, I need you. I need your grace to forgive me. I need your love to change me today. Father, I want what you want for my life. Thank you for your amazing love. 
Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me eternity today. But above all, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me and for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that you made a way that I can spend forever with you. So this morning, Father, I ask that Jesus would be the Lord of my life. I ask today that Jesus would be my Savior. I accept you today, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Which means you live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. And that I belong to you. And I want my dream to be a God-honoring dream. And I want to see it change lives every single where I go. Father, I thank you for this. I want to live, with, live for you, and I want to love you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So this morning, Pastor Johnny's going to close out with an illustration. So um, probably about 20, 20 something years ago, I, I was where some of you are with a dream. And I remember this book was given to me by a, a pastor. And it was called The Dream Giver. It's by a guy named Bruce Wilkinson. He also wrote The Prayer of Jabez. And I began to read the book. The book is fascinating. I highly recommend it if you're right in the middle of dream, if you're starting to dream, if you're in the middle of it. It's, uh, it's about a guy named Ordinary that leaves the land of familiar to follow his big dream. How he broke through the wall of fear. How he had to deal with border bullies that were trying to tell him to go back you can't do this how he went through the wasteland and he kept moving forward and how finally he reached his big dream but it all started with this feather if you read the book uh, ordinary finds a feather in his chair when he gets up one morning and he knows exactly what this is this is his dream it's the way he knows because he's been thinking about it it's the way he's wired so he takes this feather and on the journey, he, he, it's something that he's able to look at to say, you know what, this is the dream. The dream giver, of course, is the Heavenly Father Come on. that has given him this dream. And so he goes after this dream. And along the dream, he, he, he takes a look at this because oftentimes he wants to quit. But this reminds him, no, the dream giver, God has given me this dream. I must press on. So what we thought we'd do today is, is to, to give some of you who have given us your dreams, maybe some of you haven't yet, but the opportunity to take something with you that could be a reminder. Because like we said at the very beginning, Satan wants nothing more to steal that dream, to destroy it, to keep you from ever thinking about it again. But he also knows the power of that dream. If you were to take that and move forward with it, what it could do in the kingdom of God. So we want to give you something, uh, let you have an opportunity during this next few moments. It's part of our service. Don't worry. Don't, we get, we, it's part of um, what's going to happen. We have time. Is up here to my right, my left, we have these boards. And you're, all of you have been wondering, probably since you walked in, why are there feathers stuck to that board? Because we want to give you the opportunity, if you'd like to, to take one of these. And what I would say is take a feather. There are different colors, different sizes. Take a feather that represents your dream. Maybe the dream for your home, your family, your wife, your son, your daughter, your grandparents. Maybe it's the dream of that business idea, that, that mission trip, that, that crazy thing that you think nobody understands. But take this and set it somewhere where you'll see it. Maybe on your dresser. I know there's things on my dresser, and, I, and, and when sometimes I'll clean, and I'll be like, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's that dream. Come on, come on, come that's on. That's that dream. And when people ask, what is that feather for, Mom? Why do you have that feather on your, on your desk or on your, you know, why do you have that in your Bible or in your book? You always look at that. What is that, Mom? What a great opportunity to say, let me tell you about this, son. Let me tell you about this, sweetheart. Let me tell you about this, friends. This feather sits on my table, on our, on our coffee table, because of this. God has given me a dream. Because the more you're able to speak that out, the more yes. you'll become confident yes. in the dream giver who gave you that dream. And this is not a, something that we're trying to pressure you to do at all. This is just an opportunity for you to take and to be able to pray for that. And every time you see that, to remind yourself of the dream that God's given you. You know, I used to teach uh, uh, guitar lessons um, back uh, a few years back, well, actually quite a few years back. I had this young man, he was 10 years old, and his, uh, his, wanted to learn the guitar. So his parents brought him this beautiful, nice guitar, like <laughs> nicer than mine, Rodney. I was kind of <laughs> jealous. you coveted it. I know, I kind of did. It was, I had to confess my sins. Um, so I was, I remember playing, l l having lessons with him, and I noticed after every, like 
four lessons, he wasn't progressing at all, like zero. I remember asking him, I said, let's just call him Bob. I said, Bob, Bobby. He said, yes, sir. I said, how much have you practiced? He goes, I don't know. I said, how many, how many, how many days did you practice? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like how much this kid practiced. How much did you pick up the guitar? How many uh, hours did you, how many minutes? Mm -hmm. Did you practice at all? No, sir. <laughs> he had been given this beautiful guitar that could make beautiful music, but he didn't even practice it. He didn't even use it. It just sat there. He just wanted to hang out with me and they're like, oh, that's fun. You know, hanging out together in church is amazing as we wait together with God. But he's given each one of you something very specific, very focused. And he wants you to pick it up and begin to play it, begin to use it for his glory. Yes. And it may take some while time, and yeah, you're going to get calluses on your fingers, and those hurt. Mm. There's going to be some twangy stuff going on. But do it. Yes. Keep picking it up. Keep practicing. Keep pressing on. That's what we want to remind you of today. We've given you some tools. We've given you what we can. We want to pray with you. We're, we're dedicated to pray with you. I can tell you, Sandy's here. She's going to pray over these multiple times. The prayer team's going to pray for these. these. And we want to pray for you about that as well. But we also want to give you the opportunity to maybe take something tangible with you to do that. So would you stand with me right now? Our prayer team's going to come down here. And in this moment, we're going to sing the song, The Blessing. We're going to sing the song, The Blessing again. And in this moment, we have time, so don't worry. We have time. If that's you, you want to come up and just grab one of these feathers, doesn't matter, grab it. Take it with you. Remind yourself of what God's done, what, who you are in Him. And then after we're done, we're going to come up and close. But let this moment begin to pray. What is that? What's your next step? So uh, can we worship together? Y'all feel free to come up. This is your time.
to run with it. I had a man come up to me right during worship and said, God, you know, God gave me that dream. God gave me that dream. I was the one that said I want to dream again. I want to know what my dream is. He just told me God gave me that dream. Right now, God gave him that dream. So church, God gave him that dream. That's exciting. So as you leave here today, remember the dream. Remember this. Pray over it. Be praying for each other. God's doing some great things. If you need personal prayer, we want to pray for you right now. We love you guys. This Wednesday, 6.30, don't forget, we're, it's going to be an awesome time, all of us together. Y'all have an incredible day. Have a great day tomorrow, and we'll see you guys, hopefully Wednesday evening. Love you guys. Good night. I mean, goodbye. Good night. Good afternoon.